Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, before we begin this video, I want to uh, just make a couple of announcements. I've upgraded my hardware a little bit, so now I'm actually uh, sharing an outbound camera uh, pointing at me uh, while I'm programming. Um, and I made a little over half of this video before I had made that upgrade. So, um, you know, I went back and I recorded this piece uh, just to introduce myself uh, so that you guys can see me and uh, hopefully this new format works uh, for future video sessions. Uh, I, I stepped away for about three or four weeks. I apologize for that. Uh, I will be recording more regularly again. Um, I'd say we're about at the midpoint if we want to include the AI and uh, the PGN in the database, which I plan on getting to. Uh, but you do now, you should, if you followed me so far, have a working um, basic chess engine. So this video is going to cover the topic of the en passant move. Um, and then after we finish here, we'll look at uh, move promotion and maybe some other special moves, get all the test cases imported, and then start looking at the um, AI and uh, more good stuff. Okay. I uh, hope this series is useful to you guys, uh, and I'll see you in the video in a couple seconds. Bye. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 42nd video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. In this video, I want to focus on the en passant move. Um, before I do that, uh, there are some minor cleanups I want to make. Uh, the first one is I want to teach you guys how to use the warning messages. So if we go to the move class, we'll notice that there are a bunch of warnings that we get here on the on the right hand side. Right, so the first one says method uh, is castling move is never used. And we get class major attack move is never used. So Let's start to address these, right? So we forgot to use the major attack move. Uh, so let's go to the bishop class and confirm that. Yep, when we make a bishop and we, we either make the major move or the attack move. And we differentiated from within the attack moves. There were different types of attack moves. One of them was a major attack move. So let's go ahead and use major attack move. And right, so let's you go ahead and use that. Uh, in bishop, let's come here in king, major attack move, let's come here in knight, major attack move, let's skip the pawn for a second and go to the queen, uh, major attack move, I want to use the on-demand static import and major attack mode. Static import, okay. Um, so now if we go back to the move class, sometimes these warnings take a minute to clean up too. That warning cleaned up nicely. Um, so now let's go to the second one. What's the saying? The saying that pawn move is not uh, being used anywhere. So obviously we want the pawn move to be used here. Uh, we're using the pawn jump there. This should not be using a major move, I believe. <clears throat> Let's see, is that right? Uh, yes, that. Let's see. Yeah, that should be a pawn move. So that should be a pawn move. Right, and pawn attack, pawn attack. 
By the way, this is where the remainder of the work is going to be for the en passant. Um, so it would be nice to go through and look at, we, we will at some point look at all of our warnings. Ideally, we should be, we should be warning free at the end of this exercise. And notice I am now using PawnMove, but the IDE hasn't sort of caught up yet. I guess I could compile move.java to see if that makes it go away. Um, let's see here. Pawn en passant attack move is not used anywhere. That's okay. Okay, so I think for the most part we've done we've done some good cleanup there. So let's bring up <clears throat> All right, let's bring up the entry for en passant. So here it is, and so it's a special move and right so in this example the black pawn on b4 is going to capture en passant and there's a series of steps that have to take place right so it's listed out here one two three first the pawn on a2 has to jump to a4 right so it has to be the first move of the pawn, it jumps to a4, and if there is a pawn adjacent, that's an enemy pawn, right, after we transition to that board, you can see that here in the second diagram, then that pawn can capture the jump pawn en passant, right? That's what we see happens uh, you know, one, two, three in these diagrams, right? You jump up here, now you've got this opportunity to attack black, and black takes, goes to a3 and captures the pawn on a4 en passant, okay? And um, really, the I encourage you guys to read this page. If you don't take here, then... Um, then you then you lose that ability, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so right. Let's go back to the code. Right. So, the whole point of so <clears throat> if we were to go to the move class and we were to look at execute on pawn jump, right? We'll notice we basically set ourselves up here. We've said that when we execute the pawn jump, the board that we transition to, notice that don't forget we have a builder that builds the board that we're transitioning to, right? That board will set the en passant pawn to the current pawn that's being moved. In, in the as a jump pawn, right? So what we're doing here is we're, when we make this move, on the subsequent board that we create, we're establishing this pawn on A4, this white pawn, as the en passant pawn. Then, on this board, when we come to calculate the black pawn's legal moves, all we have to do is look at the board and ask, is there an en passant pawn? And if there's an en passant pawn on the diagonal, then, you know, if there's an en passant pawn uh, adjacent to me, excuse me, not on the uh, di diagonal, adjacent to my location, then I can capture it uh, diagonally, right? That's the basic algorithm. And then with that, we don't have to do anything special or remember any history, right? We're really only remembering it one in the single move prior, right, when we transition to the new board. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Uh, once you look at it that way, it actually becomes really easy um, because here the work is done. And don't forget, on the builder, we basically set the en passant pawn. Let's go back and look at what that does. 
right on the builder here for the for the board class we have this dot on pass on pawn is equal to that pawn and I believe did I not set that yeah I guess I, I don't know if I set that yet but in the board class uh, I guess that's the only pe uh, the only thing that's left to do is here in the board class we want to say private final pawn on passant pawn and we want to say after we establish all the pieces we want to say this dot on passant pawn is equal to board dot on passant pawn oops builder not board right so that makes things a lot easier so we're well on our way here Uh, so now, now that we've established that, the hard part really is here in calculate legal moves, which, you know, sort, sort of if you think about the sequence in your mind, um, you're going to establish on the board that the enemy moves to, you're going to establish the en passant pawn, right? We've done that by in the pawn jump execute move. Now, in calculate legal moves, for the pawn, we basically have to check for the en passant pawn. So this code, I'd say, you know, it's not really that, it's not hard to understand, but, um, you know, it's a little squirrely. So let's take a look at it. Right, so what we want to do is, it's not going to be when we're doing, you know, jump eight squares forward or jump 16 squares forward, it's really going to be when we're looking at our diagonal uh, attack, okay? It's that, that's when it's gonna, when, when, when we're looking at it. And really, it's not when, um, here we're saying if the offset is equal to seven, right? And then we say if it's occupied, if the tile is occupied, right? Then what we can say here is else if, okay? This is the clause that we're going where we're going to do all the work. And it's going to start with board.get on passant pawn. And it looks like I didn't expose a getter method. Not equal to null. So we need to go back to the board class. And we need to just say right. Let me do that. <clears throat> pawn. If that's not null, right? Several conditions that you need to check here. Board dot get on pass on pawn dot get piece position is equal to this dot get piece position or this dot piece position plus We'll explain this code. This dot piece alliance dot get opposite direction. So we we have a method called get direction. We would like a method called get opposite direction. This will we'll, I'll probably have to jog you guys' memory on this, but bear with me as we just simply write the code out. And we'll come back and 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 explain it. Then we want to say. Final piece, piece on candidate is equal to board dot get on pass on pawn. And if this dot piece alliance 
is not equal to piece on candidate dot get piece alliance if the alliances are not the same then one final if if this dot well, we won't do we won't do promotion yet. We will not do promotion. Let's just say, uh, we'll say, we'll say, legal moves dot add new pawn on passant attack move board this candidate on destination coordinate and piece on the candidate. There we go. Right, so that was that's you know that's a little bit that's not that easy. But first, let's um, let's go one step at a time here. Right, so in alliance, let's see if we can go to the alliance class. We have a method called get direction, and I want to propose that we. So this is the direction for the alliance for either white or black, right? So I believe we said that white is downwards, so it's minus one, and black is upwards, so it's one, right? And we need to get opposite direction. Right? And as you might Imagine this is just going to be the exact opposite, right? So This is the enemy, the direction the enemy is moving in, right? That's the way to think about it. <clears throat> okay, so now we have that method. So, right, so what we're saying here is that if the en passant pawns position, right? If you take the position of the enemy piece and it's um, and the en passant pawn if the position of your piece is equal to that of the um, enemy piece minus re really what we're saying here is it's next to you right your the, that piece is either um, to your left or to your right okay then you can take that piece okay so hopefully that makes sense you should be able to set a break point and see that in play um, it is it is a little bit challenge challenging to explain that part of it. So that's so there we got the uh, en passant for the seven direction, if you will, like the um, the direction. <clears throat> excuse me. The for seven, then we want to handle that scenario for nine, right and. I believe it's going to be it's going to be pretty much the exact same code. Okay? So you can take this snippet right here. You can take this snippet starting here and copy it from here to here. I'll double check uh, and, and put that here in the not in for nine, and it should work. And right into 
this spot. All right, so this is going to be a copy paste operation from this point. And the only difference is that this part of the equation is going to be subtracted, right? So really what we did here is what we're saying, if you are looking at the board orientation, what we're trying to do is to get the square next to you that is the en passant pawn, okay? That's the easiest way that I would be able to describe it. So um, let's see if we can bring up Safari and if we were to look up en passant, So, right, so really the plus and the minus, it's getting you this, depending on the direction that you're moving in, if you're white, it's getting the square next to you, okay? So that's why we had, um, that's, that's why it's a function of the direction of the piece. That's probably the hardest part to understand about this. Um, so, right, so that should be it. Um, Let's see if we can, let's see what happens when we play this out. All right, so let's just make some innocuous moves here. Boom. So here, now this pawn here, that's going to be set as the en passant pawn on this current board. And in white, minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine direction, we should be able to take that pawn. So I'm gonna highlight the legal move for white, and what do you know, there it is. Boom, you can take that pawn en passant. And we did get an exception there on some sort of image is fine. It looks like a separate bug for the Taken take Pieces panel. But I think you guys get the point there. So now um, en passant looks like it's working. Again, just in summary, um, the key to not maintaining state, right, to not having to remember is that when, when, the, when the jump move happens, that move that's jumped, that's set as that board's en passant pawn. And it's eligible for capture via en passant. That is the mechanism by which we um, can achieve en passant without having to remember a bunch of stuff. So it's a benefit of the immutability that we had when we made the board. Um, and we know really that there's only ever going to be one en passant pawn on any given board. That's just part of the rules. So. Anyway, I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope this new format uh, with the outbound facing camera is okay for you guys. If it's not, just leave feedback in the description box. Um, and I've resized my screen, so hopefully the font's still okay. Um, anyway, please uh, subscribe and like, uh, and we will uh, continue in the next video. We'll probably stay here and do pawn promotion, which isn't too uh, difficult. And then... Um, We'll import some test cases, like I had mentioned, uh, and we'll uh, look at some really interesting stuff like mm, uh, artificial intelligence um, and uh, some uh, game databases. That stuff's really cool. It's actually there's a lot of stuff in the news these days about AI. So I'm hoping that we can um, I'll provide some context there and show you some uh, show you guys some cool cool programming techniques. Uh, anyway, thanks for your time, guys. See you next time.